What up, family? It's your boy Craze holding you down once again. I had a chance to sit down with my man Jam Master Jay's older brother, Marvin Thompson, and he tells me the story, some good stories about Jam Master Jay, how he got started, how he hooked up with Run DMC. It's a really, really dope interview. I'm going to also show it in different parts, so just sit tight. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Make sure y'all click that bell for more information, and make sure you leave me a comment, share the links. You know I always like to push the culture forward, so enjoy. Hello there, my name is Marvin Thompson. I'm Jam Master Jay's brother. Yeah, Jason Mizell to me, but Jam Master Jay to the world. Um, what was it? How old was he like growing up? Well, Jay's a normal kid doing this, you know, normal kid stuff. And I mean, you know, uh, let me see. But he's young, you know, at the time we moved to Queen, Jay was like five, six years old. So, and I was like 16. I'm 10 years older, different, 10 years different. So, my mom moved to Queens. I stayed in Brooklyn. I ain't really moved to Queens till I was like out of high school. Cause I'm not, I was in my like my junior my, to my last year in high school, and I ain't really want to commute back and forth. But I came home on weekends. So Jay was a normal kid. Got out there, got involved with the Queens life. Start doing different things, you know, going to Sparfoot. You know, for those that don't know what Sparfoot is, it's one of them uh, camps for boys that don't know how to behave. Um, but in that, normal, normal kid did normal kid stuff, you know, like I was doing in Brooklyn. He just did it in Queens. So when did y'all guess, I guess, when did y'all discover he had a love for music? Well, Jay pretty much self-taught. You know, when he got to junior high school, he, got, he joined the band in school, the band. And me being in and out of the house, you know, I came home one time, he had a big, what you call that thing, the tuba? <laughs> was bigger than him. I know it was bigger than, that it fit over your body. He had one of them in the house and bugged me out. I was like, what you doing with that? He's like, I'm trying to learn how to play that. I was like, okay. So he, he, he pretty much self-taught himself a lot of the instruments that he did play. But music always, we always, I mean, we entertain ourselves because we do, do uh, we all the family get together like during the holiday, whatever. And then so many of us, I mean, you know, my grand, you know, grandkids and stuff like that, that we, we, we break off into groups. Like it'd be the Jackson Five, the James Brown, the Temptations, the Supremes. And we entertain ourselves, you know, talent show in the living room for, the, for our parents and our grandparents. So that's pretty much, that's how we go. That's how we, you know, being uh, well, we was, you know, kids that we were born in best style. So that's what we did for ourselves, and just for us entertaining ourselves. So um, as he got older and got into hip hop, I guess when, when was the first time you was kind of knew he was kind of into hip hop? Not Run DMC yet, uh -huh. but just like into hip hop. Um, I was in college, when I was at LIU, and um, my first semester I stayed on campus. So when, you know, when the year was over, I moved all my equipment, you know, everything back home in my mother's house. And when the way came back, he had my uh, components that we called at the time on the, on the, on the dining room table with another uh, turntable. And that's how I learned, because he took my components set. <laughs> And was scratching using that as a you know scratch with, and then uh, I had a friend that was a DJ that played uh, the radio in uh, college, and so he was teaching me how about the DJing and stuff like that. And uh, one time, I, one weekend, I was home in Queens, and they were in the park, and they were you know DJing in the park and stuff like that. And, I, and, I, and that's when I first saw Jay. And I'm like, oh, okay. So that's how, you know, I guess that my component set was still valuable to him. So did he ever talk to you about getting into music, like from a younger brother? Yo, bro, I'm, you know, I think. No, I'm, no, no, no. He didn't know. It's just something that he, he did. So when, I, did you, when did he know, when did you realize you had a famous brother? Like I said, I was in college, and you know, one day uh, a friend of mine called me and told me to turn to Channel 9 
what the name of that show, some hip hop, some rap show, video show was on, and Suck MC was on. And that's when I discovered, because I saw the, the video. I'm like, oh. they said, Yo, ain't, that your, ain't that your brother? I'm like, where? Said, your brother's on TV, turn your channel nine. I'm like, I turned, and there he go. I'm like, oh. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. Uh -uh, I didn't know. So, what do you think his influence was in hip hop? What do you think his influence? Not only hip hop, but just the culture. Well, I mean, like I said, I always, we always had music. Like my our father, he had like uh, Johnny Taylor, CC Ryder. You know, all them old the Temptations and all that was in the house. Music always just playing in the house. If I was home, I was playing the LPs, or my, my, my father, you know, get a little, get a little nip on, he'll play the LPs, and you know. So he, music always was around us. And plus, we have a cousin that was uh, a famous conductor, and, you know, and uh, we, though we didn't really know him, but, uh, you know, so the music was in the, in the blood, I guess you could say that. And, um, we were just doing, you know, I mean, I just hip hop was the, the thing of that generation. Also, you got to see it like that. Like, I mean, when I was growing up, you know, at my age, everybody wanted to be the doo wop on the corner. So hip hop was coming. That was his generation. So what did you think of of him and Run? Like, what did you think of their look? <laughs> when the, the beginning, yeah, like, or you know, the as we guy. got involved. When the beginning, with the with the uh, with the uh, sport jacket, or <laughs> the nerdy look, <laughs> well, you know, hey, y'all, uh, for real. Uh, when Jay got involved with Run DMC, Jay changed the image with the sneakers from the sneakers to the hat. So from head to toe, Jay changed the whole style, the whole everything. Cause watching, like I said, I fall of myself. You know, with a ten year difference and, and his father age difference between the twin year difference between him and his dad and the ten year difference between me and him and my style, how I walk, how I talk, how I presented myself and my way I dress, he took that, me, you know, and the Brooklyn and bought the Queens and this changed the whole look. So the hip hop is and the hip hop and all that. His, his influence with the hip hop was the early guys like uh, Melly Mel, Cold Cross Brothers, you know what I'm saying? So that, like, <clears throat> like, you know, like I, you know, like I said, that was their generation. So from 76, when hip hop started, when rap started in 76, 77, I wasn't even involved with that. I was still doing what I did, you know what I'm saying, as far as in the streets. Moving and shaking and baking, you know? Shaking So, uh, your, your brother was very, a huge influence with uh, worldwide from the run you see, right? But he wasn't in the background, right? He kind of made it known to kind of, if you're a DJ, you're a DJ, but you're very much part of it. I think he was like one of the first DJs to kind of really be a superstar DJ. Like everybody else was kind of behind the artist. The DJ is the brain of the group. The DJ is the, is the one that brings the music. I understand with the park, when the DJs came out to the park, it was about the DJ. It wasn't about, cause it was about getting the party, keeping the party going. <clears throat> the rappers came about and was trying to get permission to be down, you know, as far as being a part of the DJ. The DJ pulled them in, like, you know what I'm saying? All, somehow it got twisted around, but like we said, most of the DJs stayed in the background. Jay was in the forefront because Jay was a powerful person. His personality itself was like, look at me, I'm, you know, I'm here. You got to see me, see me, see me, see me. So for you not to know that and see that, you're, you, you slept. You didn't understand Run DMC. It would have never been Run DMC without Jam Master J. Either Run, could Run, no, Run's a DJ now. 
Because one was the center Curtis Blow at the beginning. One was D Curtis Blow DJ. You know what I'm saying? DMC, he draw, and he was just, he was a straight A student. You know, he was that kid going to Catholic school. And he, and he commuted from Queens to Harlem every day to go to high school. So, you know, they was separate but different. And Jay was the guy, you know, in the neighborhood running and banging and, you know, doing what he do. So, You know, he was part of a group that was very big. Then he slowly kind of started his own thing, brought a few artists out. But what do you think, as his brother, what do you, what do you think his contribution was to hip-hop? His whole? contribution? Yeah, his contribution. Besides his, his talent, as far as being a DJ, Jay, Jay, Jay was um, a visionary. Let's say that. It's, you know, he... You know, like me and him would sit in the house and we'd talk, you know, and he'd run ideas by me and I'd run ideas by him. And I mean, as far as his talent, Jay would sit there, like, I'd be asleep and Jay would wake me up. He'd come in from a show, wake me up, and be like, what do you think about this song? Or come from the studio, what do you think about this? So I, I ain't gonna say I was one of his main influences, but. I, I was an important part of his, you know, what he was doing. And, uh, I mean, he had a lot of people around him that was teaching them, and as far as the music was concerned. But he would practice. His, I think his, 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 he was his own influence. Cause he, he wanted to be better than he was yesterday, you know? Sorry about that. You know, I'm turning the volume off. <clears throat> And uh, he wanted to be better than he was yesterday. Yeah, because he, he, like, <clears throat> let's say he had a show tonight. Everybody be asleep. Everybody be go back to the hotel or whatever. Jay be up for, after the show, Jay be up for the next three, four hours practicing. Like, how he going to make that show tomorrow better than the show tonight? What he going to do different the night, tomorrow night than he did last night? as far as scratching. You know, like, if you ever watched a tall run DMC show, even the way he, he, he scratched and run and D, it was really never the same for those that had the ear to hear. It was really never, really, really, you know, he had catch run name at a different, a different location or a different time or, or he will spell it. He, Cause he was in there trying to learn how to, he was, he was all you in it. Or DMC, you know, like D name, he just catch it and catch it and catch it, the D. So he, like, he, he has said that they got his son's DJ now, and I'll be like, yo, your dad will practice like it was an eight hour a day job. Because it was his job. You know what I'm saying? So if you ain't gonna do that, then go get you a regular job, man, because you gotta sit there and practice. It ain't about, because you could DJ, you all that. You ain't all that if you can't master your dad or touch what he's doing. So eight hours a day, it's, hey, then you go play. So why do you think people love Jay so much? <laughs> Yo, because we, this is the way our mom raised us. You know, you got to get that to Connie Perry, myself. You know, you gotta get that to Connie, you know, her mom, because we ain't better than nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Either we might have been kings or, kings or queens or whatever, but we still walk down Jamaica Avenue and, and still go to the same White Castle and, and sit there and eat hamburgers along with you. You know what I'm saying? Go to McDonald's, because we're still regular people. We ain't, we ain't never, mom never, like, no matter what, we ain't never, never consider ourselves better, you know, than anybody. We sit there and talk to you all day. You know what I'm saying? And we accessible. And Jay never moved out the neighborhood, so, you know, we ain't like we made a million dollars and we, we disappeared. We, we made a million dollars and we stayed right there 
and we helped the neighborhood. We, we did in the neighborhood, you know. So when did you realize he was a, a, a great businessman? Businessman? Yeah. When Shit. did you realize he was yeah. a great businessman? We had great ideas as far as being a great businessman. I, I ain't going to say that because we lost our shirts. You know what I'm saying? We did the clothing line. And the clothing line? Uh, Walker Wear with April Walker. We, we tried to do that with her, and uh, that, was, that was successful back then. Yeah, it, 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 we, had, we, had, we had some customers, but it didn't, it didn't go the next, the, to the next level, you know what I'm saying, that we wanted to, because we didn't have the, the help we needed, okay? We had the JMJ Records. The only successful act we really, really, really had on that was we had an Afro family and Onyx. But Onyx was our, our really biggest group we had on that label. So, I mean, huh? And Jail Felony. Yeah, but you know, it, it's like, you know, we had business wise, he was a great businessman. He had a great idea, he had great vision there. He was a great visionary, but we just didn't have that extra step we needed to, to take it to another level. In the studio, he was a master. As far as being in the studio, making tracks, doing music, and all that, he was, he, that's where his comfort zone was. <clears throat> but as far as saying being in the office and trying to conduct and try to do like a Russell Simmons type move and all that, we, was, we wasn't that people. We wasn't that pe those people. We more, in, I'd rather be in the studio.